A very good evening from Bangkok. It's Reem and Roshan once again wrapping up the games that took place today. In Group D, the kickoffs uh, took place over at Buriram Stadium, and the early kickoff was, of course, uh, between 2018 finalists Vietnam and UAE. They were held to a goalless draw, Roshan. Despite mm. the scoreline, though, who do you think had a better 90 minutes? <laughs> That's a tough question for me to answer, really, because I, I didn't think that game was uh, was that great. Um, I mean, when you look at the sides, yes, there were plenty of shots on goal, but how many high quality uh, chances did they create? Not too many. I think it was two shots on target from both those teams. <laughs> what Vietnam did uh, well, though, was to uh, make good use of the possession that they had, you know, about 35% possession as Vietnamese side and still were able to create some, uh, some opportunities in that game. But again, I, I wouldn't say they were high quality chances or, or you know, uh, Positions where they would they should usually be scoring from. Uh, Quang Hai, as usual, had a, had a good game for them, uh, controlling things. Initially started out on the right hand side, second half changed into a, a central midfield role, got more involved in the game uh, in those areas. Ali Saleh for the UAE was uh, again their main threat, really. Jasim Yakub drifting onto the right hand side tried to create opportunities for them. Um, but you know, I guess at the end of the day, coaches speak will say, you know. It's a decent point, you know, at the opening match of the, the campaign. Right. Perhaps these two sides will look at each other and think, yeah, I think we faced the, the toughest team in the group here and then, uh, you know, picked up a point from that, then uh, they can look ahead. Mm -hmm. I think it's also worth mentioning that this is the first AFC tournament that's fully utilising mm. a VAR throughout all the matches. And I'm mentioning this, of course, because there was an incident where UAE were awarded a penalty initially, but yeah. after a review, it turns out uh, the incident took place outside the box. Yeah, that's exactly what VAR is for. And for me, you know, not just the incident that we had in that game, but uh, also I think back to yesterday, uh, Saudi Arabia against uh, Japan and these are you know match changing moments and that's what you 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 use VAR for and for me you know when you get that clarity you give the referees that opportunity to have a look at that review it um, even in that game uh, Saudi Arabia against Japan we were looking at it from the stands and you know thinking oh maybe it's simulation from uh, Brycon and mm -hmm. the referee gave it VAR gave him the opportunity to go have a look at it as well to see we made the contact and then in that situation and it was the correct decision so Decisions are correct. They're not taking too much time with these uh, situations. I think it's absolutely working really well at the moment. Of course, we still have plenty of games to go, but right now, that's what it's there for, and uh, I'm delighted with the way it's working. Moving on to the second game of the day from Group D, also at the Buriram Stadium, it was DPR Korea versus Jordan, a comfortable win for Jordan mm. uh, over over DPR Korea. 2-1, yeah. the final score. Yeah. Um, all three points they walk away with, and yeah. then top of the group. Yeah, you know, I think they'll be very satisfied with that. Again, this wasn't really a fantastic first half. Not great for the neutrals if you're watching it. Not too much excitement in terms of uh, opportunities or much creativity uh, for, uh, in that first half. Of course, Jordan got that goal just before halftime as Yaratia scoring from the penalty spot. And that, of course, changes the complexion of the game in the second half. Second half was a lot better. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more open, more opportunities for, for both those teams, especially for, for Jordan. They had plenty of pace mm -hmm. uh, in those attacking areas. Al Naimat had an opportunity well saved by the DBR career goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. uh, but okay, they got their second goal uh, to Omahani and uh, you know, they were in control pretty much uh, of that match. I didn't see enough from DPR Korea in an attacking sense. They did have possession of the ball. They weren't able to really cause Jordan too many, uh, too many issues uh, in that game. So yeah, Jordan 2-1, the result was say 2-1, but I think it was a comfortable win for them in the end, you know, nice and secure. Uh, and they'll be delighted with that start. Okay, uh, let's have a quick look now at the recap of the standings. Uh, Jordan topped the group with three points, Vietnam and UAE one point each. Mm. DPR Korea still in search for that first point. And oh, just like that, Roshan, that's mm. the end of the group. Uh, or sorry, the round one of the group stages. It's officially over. A group A will kick off round two of your games tomorrow. Mm. Of course, Australia versus Thailand. That's mm. the one I think all eyes will be on. Mm. Um, I think Thailand would want to see if they can you know, keep up with that momentum and continue continue that winning streak as well. And the other game, it's Bahrain versus mm. Iraq. Yep. And we will be in the thick of the action uh, and bring you all the updates as well. Make sure you follow us on all our social uh, media channels as well. And until then, good night and see you tomorrow. <laughs>